Pranitha Pele, a South African doctor who has spent a significant time, amount of time on the ground in South Sudan, uh, was part of uh, Doctors Without Borders mission in the country. She's worked at a center providing 250,000 people with primary and secondary health care, including life-saving surgery. She joins us now on the line. Dr. Pele, good morning. Um, nine months you spent uh, in South Sudan. What were some of the biggest challenges? Just talk us through what it's like on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, good morning. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, yes, South Sudan uh, remains today a medical and humanitarian emergency. The civilian population has really borne the brunt of emergency after emergency. There's regular bouts of violent clashes, and in fact, in the first half of 2011, we've seen as much violent-related deaths than we have in 2009. Um, there's chronic malnutrition. There's more, more of a quarter million people that are displaced today. Um, about malnutrition, yeah, there's food, rising food prices, food insecurity, um, and there are many challenges. I think in particular you have more than 75% of the population who don't even have access to basic health care. And this is further compounded when you have conflict uh, because it's not only about people fleeing and when they flee their homes, they can't access any health care, water, or sanitation, or shelter. Mm. But then it's difficult for us to access them. What's it like dealing with these patients, a lot of whom have walked significant distances to get to where you are uh, because the availability of aid is, is, is so scarce? According to the figures, um, you treat over 3,000 South Sudanese uh, per month. And as you say, some of the... The, the sicknesses and illnesses you deal with are, are not only related to malnourishment, they're, they're related to violence and trauma. Um, what is it like seeing these people every day? I mean, it's just, you know, it's purely heartbreaking, but at the same time you see um, an immense amount of solidarity of population. So you have somebody who's fleeing from another area, is displaced into an area that they don't know, but sometimes they are taken up by host families, but sometimes they are in the bush, they have nothing. Uh, I mean, it really is just absolutely nothing. No shelter, no water, no, um, you know, no clean sanitation. And you must remember what we've learned in conflict settings or when people are displaced, they still need to have their babies or need an emergency operation. And access to this is really, really difficult. So MSF at the moment, we currently provide emergency aid to displaced by, you know, being able to have a mobile clinic that goes to people to find them, vaccination campaigns, because measles is the biggest killer in this situation. We provide non-food items so that they can actually go and get the water um, and also food, for example. But this is, re it really is, it's quite heartbreaking. And for us at the moment, it's clear that, um, you know, there are very acute, severe needs of the population that are just unmet. Pranitha, besides the obvious thing like uh, donations to MSF um, for the provision of supplies and for the provision of doctors, is, is there a need at all for volunteers, you know, pe people who, lis who are listening who might want to get involved, who might want to help with the situation there? Um, w would you say that's needed, volunteers, for example? I think there's many things that's needed for, for South Sudan right now. And, of course, people can uh, show their solidarity either through donations or being able to go to, um, to, to, to volunteer their time uh, either by going on mission. Of course, that takes some time because, you, you know, to see if you have some skill. But definitely we are always looking for not just doctors, of course, and, uh, and doctors without borders. So we encourage this. But I think, of course, more broadly, because South Sudan is seen as a... Um, as a post-conflict context, in fact, most donors and NGOs work in a development paradigm. But for me, I think the, the thing that's really needed right now for South Sudan is that it needs to be recognized yeah. as the emergency that it is. But but uh, we welcome all or any spirit of solidarity with the South Sudanese. It's, it's quite an odd, odd juxtaposition of, of circumstances in South Sudan at the moment. They're, they're the world's newest country. There were celebrations, celebrating independence and secession from the north. Um, for the people that you see, is there any reference uh, in, in these historic developments for them, or is it really about the day-to-day -day finding of food, water, and medicine? No, I mean, it, you, I have seen and I've witnessed it is, I mean, the you know, historical element of this is, and there isn't anybody in South Sudan who doesn't know what the 9th of July represented to them. 
But what you must remember, it's the same person who, who cherishes that. It's because they have lived for more than 25 years um, in conflict on a constant daily basis. And this, I think, is, you know, is not just traumatic um, physically, but also psychologically. And this, for me, is, um, is why I don't think they, I think they are very cognizant of what this day means. Mm-hmm. But uh, on a day-to-day level, you do walk uh, five days to a health clinic if you are in labor. Um, Your child doesn't have food. I mean, it's, you know, they have to prioritize. And what I think, as I said before, Mm. the need is for international donors, uh, international government, as well as the South Sudanese government, to be able to prioritize Mm. those needs now. Well, Pranitha, we congratulate uh, you and your team on the work that you are doing, and we wish you every success. That was Dr. Pranitha Pillay from Doctors Without Borders.